Hello everyone and a very very good evening. So before I start first let me know if I'm visible and audible to you. So we have Papiya Das here. Hi Indrapal Bhalla. Hey Suhani. Good evening Rashmi Kumari. Yes, hi Srishti. Hi Angel Singh. Hello Gungun Tagore. I'm doing good. Hi Aditi. Yes, Rutu is imaginative corner. Proud to be a Baijuite. Wow, amazing. Pritesh Kulkarni. Yes, Indrapal Bhallai is saying yes, ma'am. Yes, Suhani, I do remember you. There are students, because I am also now familiar with the names, because there are students who actually regularly did uh, attending the classes. Gungun Tagore, perfectly visible and audible. Okay. Good evening, Mali Lokesh. Yes, audible. Hi, Abhiditya. Hi, Rishabh Gupta. All right, great. So there is no glitch at all, so we can begin. So my name is Kushbu and a very, very warm welcome to this session of class grade of grade 8. So today's session is going to be a bit different because today we'll explore everything on direct and inverse proportions while building a mind map for the easy understanding and an easy flow of the entire chapter. So are you all ready? Yes, I am good, Rashmi. Papiya Das is giving a lots of thumbs up. Yes, Rishabh, I know that. I, I, I just said I'm familiar with the names now. I know the students who are actually regularly attending the classes. Yes. Vishnu Prasad Sahu, yes, I do remember. Thank you, Angel Singh. Super excited, yes. Great, all right. So let's dive right in. So today we will not just learn. We will not just solve questions, we will try to visualize the concepts. We will try to understand the entire chapter in a very interesting manner, right? So let's take an example. So here you can see that we have a construction site and you can see a coordinating, uh, coordinating person over here who is managing the project. His name is Rahil and you can see a residential complex need to be built here and within 10 months of time. So, Rahil wants to know that how many managing workers or cost of units are actually required for this construction. So let's help him out. Yes. Thumbs up, not thumbs up, but cold rings. <laughs> yes. Lagging. Papiya, please refresh the screen. Yes. So you know that this chapter, there are two things, two topics are there. One is direct proportion, one is indirect proportion, right? So first we will, we are going to discuss each one of them one by one. First we will start with direct proportion. Yes. Excited? This chapter is included in your syllabus also. Well, it's a very interesting chapter and it's not difficult at all. All right. Now let's go to the construction side. So here you can see one more person and his name over here is, the other person names is Mukesh. So he is basically a senior worker over here. Now Rahil, the project manager, he wants to know that how many bags of cement are actually required. So how many bags of cement he actually needs to order initially. So Mukesh is saying that 100 bags of cement are actually required. And the cost of each cement bag over here is rupees 300. So Rahil wants to know that what is the total cost going to be in that case. So can we help him out? Can you tell me if the cost of one bag is rupees 300 and 100 bags are needed to develop this construction site required then? Yes. Gungun Tagore, Bye is fun with learning. Thank you. Yes, Suhani is saying direct proportion. Right. Yes. Vishnu Prasad Sahu. Absolutely. Good. That's the right answer. So let's help him out. Let's solve this thing. Correct. All of you are giving the right answer. What will be the cost of 100 bags of cement if cost of one bag is rupees 300? This is the cost for 100 bags, right? 300 times 100, that's going to be rupees 30,000. Absolutely. So you all know how to find this out. Wow. All right. So one week has been passed and after one week of work, Mukesh, the senior worker, again he has another demand. Now he is saying that we need 200 more bags of cement. But still, this time also, the cost of each bag is again rupees 300. So Rahil says, okay, but what is the cost going to be in that case? So can you tell me? Yes. Correct. This is the answer for the previous one. Absolutely. All of you given the right answer. So if number of bags are 200 now, what is the cost going to be? 
Yes, Rutu. Correct. That's unitary method, right? All right. So the cost of one bag, correct, Nidhi Gaur, That's sixty thousand. Yes, all of you have given the right answer, right? So if cost of one bag is rupees three hundred, so for two hundred bags is going to be rupees three hundred times two hundred. That's rupees sixty thousand, right? So this was easy to understand. Now let's take a quick look of what till now we have discussed. So till now we discussed that cost of one bag is rupees three hundred. Cost of hundred bags is rupees thirty thousand, and cost of two hundred bags was sixty thousand. So what we can conclude from here is, when the number of bags are increasing, the total cost is also increasing, right? And this is what we call directly proportional. Yes. So I can say that here, number of bags are directly proportional to the total cost. So if the cost of one bag is constant, that means in that case, total cost will be directly proportional to the number of bags, right? But keep this thing in mind. If cost of one bag is constant, then we are saying total cost and the number of bags are in direct proportion, right? So we have taken the example where both the quantities were increasing, right? Now, what if we reduce one of the quantity which are in direct proportion? Yes, correct. Rutu's imaginative corner, right? That's how we actually denote it, right? Yes. So now three weeks have passed, right? So after three weeks, even the work was going smoothly, right? But suddenly now workers have a demand. Now the senior worker, now again he is demanding for fifty more bags of cement. Again the cost of each bag is same. That's rupees three hundred. So Rahil wants to know, but first let's divide, decide the cost. Yes, we need to know the cost first. Prashansa is giving a lots of thumbs up. Pratesh Kulkarni, Suhani, yes, ma'am. Yes, Nidhi Gaur. If one one uh, one quantity is increasing, the other one is also increasing. Right. We discussed that case earlier. Right. So fifty more bags are needed. Right. Now let's take a quick look of till now what we discussed. So for cost of one bag, it was rupees three hundred. Cost is fixed still. Right. Cost of hundred bags is going to be rupees thirty thousand. Cost of two hundred bags is going to be rupees sixty thousand. This is what we got in the previous slides. Cost of fifty bags that is going to be rupees. Fifteen thousand. Yes, Neelam. Pajus is best in all the teachers. Sorry, I could not read the entire comment. It moves so fast that you can't read everything. Yes. Okay. So cost of fifty bags is rupees fifteen thousand, right? So what we can conclude from here is number of bags. When they are reduced, the cost also get reduced, right? When the cost is hundred. I mean the cost number of bags are hundred, cost is three thirty thousand. Number of bags are two hundred, it is increasing. You see, it's sixty thousand. But now, when the number of bags have been reduced to fifty, cost also reduces. Yes. As one commodity increases, another one increases at the same rate. Right. That's what direct proportion says. Right. So we can say here is that if the cost of uh, if the price of one bag is constant, then in that case, total cost will be directly proportional to the number of bags. Right. Now let's get back to the construction side and see what they are doing there. Right. So construction work was going smoothly, and but one fine day, the contractor accidentally leaves the his plan on the floor, and his office is quite far from this construction site. But this worker Adil, he comes for his help. So he says that, "Can I get you that? Uh, can I get that for you, sir?" Rahil says, "Okay, you take my car." So this person is asking, "What's the mileage of your car, actually?" Well, Rahil says my car travels at twenty kilometer per liter and at a speed of forty kilometers per hour. Visualization helped me too much in understanding. By which is great. Thank you, Abhiditya. Yes. Ah, uh, Tanishk, ma'am, your teaching way is so good. Thank you. Yes. So all of you have understood till now. See why we are discussing this case because this is another example for direct proportion, which we uh, which we experience every day while traveling or walking, right? So let's solve the this problem. Now, Adil says that the distance from the site to the office is actually thirty kilometers, right? So that means he'll have to travel sixty kilometers. Why? Because obviously it's going to be to and fro, right? From office to construction site and construction site to office, it's going to be sixty kilometers. Yes. All right. So to calculate this, he wants to know that how much petrol would he actually require to travel sixty kilometers. Let's take a quick look at this. So, one liter of petrol, in one liter of petrol, the car travels twenty kilometers, right? Yes. 
Harshita has given the answer. Wow, you're too fast, Harshit. Yes. Ma'am, visual, I thank you. Voice of Pranab, Baiju's is best because I'm a premier student and I've tried it. I'm glad that you're actually liking it. Yes. So here, in one liter of petrol, this car is covering, sorry, in one liter of petrol, this car is able to cover 20 kilometer distance. With 1.5 liters of petrol, it will cover 30 kilometers. With 3 liters of petrol, it will cover 60 kilometers, right? So what we can see here is that as the distance is increasing, the consumption of petrol will also increase, right? Yes, I hope everybody has understood this. I can see the answers. Yes, answer is correct. That's 3 liters. Yes. Why 3? Because with 1 liter of petrol, you can cover 20 kilometers. So with 3 liters, you would cover 3 times 20. That's going to be 60 kilometers. Yes, Indrapal Bhalla. Understood? Yeah, shall we move ahead? If it's clear to everyone, quickly you can give us thumbs up in the comment section. Abhiditya, yes ma'am. Prashansa, understood. Mali Lokesh, visualization helps a lot in study. Gungun Tagore, you're my favorite teacher and you're helping me a lot. Thank you. Yes, because they are in direct proportion. Great, so you have understood. All right. So that means the distance covered and the liter of petrol consumed are in direct proportion if, if the speed of the car remains constant. Speed is not changing. I can see a lots of thumbs up and smileys in the comment section. Great. So everyone has understood this. Right? So just keep one point in mind that, one thing in mind that speed was constant in that case. Yes? So from here we can conclude that if two measurable quantities are in direct proportion, then we can say if one quantity is increasing, the other one will also increase and vice versa. Right? So the two quantities would be similar in nature. Yes? So let's suppose we have two quantities A and B. They are said to be in direct proportion if A by B is equal to C. This was the formula which somebody was writing in the, yes, Nidhi Gaur. Correct. Only the variables are different. The meaning is same. Ritu's imaginative corner. Interesting session. Thank you. Yes. Alright. Also, ratio is going to be same. Remember these points. Ratio is going to be same when the quantities are in direct proportion. And here, this C is known as the proportionality constant. And how do we represent uh, the quantities which are directly proportional? We write it like this. This symbol over here, this shows that they are directly proportional. I don't like math, but it's now it's favorite because of Baiju's. Thank you, Abhiditya. Yes. No, Gungun, we do not have Menti today. Yeah, where C is constant. This C over here, Suhani, this is a constant over here. Like I said, we were talking about time, distance and speed, right? Three quantities we considered. So, speed was constant there, right? Yes, I hope your doubt is clear now, Suhani. Yes. Savita, ma'am, you're telling this an easy way. No, I'm really happy that you're actually able to understand this. Okay. Now, let's take a quick look at the general form of direct variation. Yes. Okay. So, if A and B are two quantities, two measurable quantities, they are said to be in direct proportion, right? So, we, we denote them like A by B is equals to A1 by B2 is equals to A2, A1 by B1 is equals to A2 by B2. I'm sorry, this is B1, right? And so on like this. Yes, Suhani, understood. Great. Yes, okay. And in the ratio, how do we represent them? So, A is to B is equals to A1 is to B1 is equals to A2 is to B2. Amazing visualization. Thank you. Yes. Previous slide. Okay, let's get back to the previous one. So, here we are talking about the two measurable quantities. We say that they are, will be in direct proportion if one is increasing, so other one is also increasing and vice versa. If one is decreasing, other one will also decrease. That's what direct proportion says, right? And the two quantities will also behave similar in nature. Like here, we're talking about A and B. We're just using some variables instead of proper quantities. They are said to be in direct proportion if A by B is equal to C and C is going to be C is known here as proportionality constant. Yes. When you remove this proportionality sign, you have to put a constant over here. Right. It's going to be A equal to B, C. So, C comes here. Right. It's like this. And ratio is same. Fantastic teaching, ma'am. Thank you, Suhani. Thank you, Papiya. 
time distance always in direct proportion it depends depends because in this case the speed was constant if speed is not constant so obviously in that case it won't be in direct proportion understood ashi yes okay mali lokesh i hope your doubt is clear now they will not always be in direct proportion here that's why i emphasized on that that speed is constant here that's why time and distance were directly proportional मैम आज टीचर ने ही मुर्गा बना दिया बहुत अच्छा किया तुम हर क्लास में मुझसे यही पूछ रहे हो मुर्गा कब बनाओगे यस अंडरस्टूड अंडरस्टूड बादल या डायरेक्ट रिलेशन यस करेक्ट दैट्स हाउ वी राइट इट डाउन ओके सो आई थिंक एवरी वन हैज अंडरस्टूड हाउ टू डिनोट द क्वांटिटीज व्हेन दे आर इन डायरेक्ट प्रोपोर्शन ओके Let's take a quick look at general form of direct variation. So a and b would be in direct proportion. Then we can write it as a by b equal to a one by b one. This is b one. A two by b two, and so on like this. Yes. Okay. And a is to b equals to a one is to b one equals to a two is to b two. That's how we denote it. Ratio is same. Yes. Crystal clear. Great. So we have understood till now what direct variation is and how do we actually represent it, right? Now let's try out some questions so that you get a better understanding. Great explanation, thank you, Prashansa. Okay, so if x is directly proportional to y in the following table, find the value of a. Quickly solve it. I want each one of you to solve it and give your answers in the chat section. Yes. Why you must have done something, Badal? So, in direct proportional, how do we denote it? A is to B, A one is to B one, A two is to B two, right? Yes. So here we will simply write it down as constant is seven by three. You can see that it is constant. When I cancel this out, this is also going to be what? This is five seven times five times seven is thirty five. Five times three is thirty five. Constant is seven by three equals to fourteen by a. So from here a is going to be fourteen times three by seven. That means seven times one seven times two. That's going to be equals to six. Ah, uh, see with tables it becomes easier for you to understand. In that case, I think you won't be making any error then. It's better that you make a table. It hardly takes a few seconds. Yes, sir, Adya. All right. Yes, six is the answer. Correct. All right. Let's take a look at the next question now. If a bus travels one twenty kilometers in one hour thirty minutes with a certain speed, how many kilometers will it cover in two hour forty five minutes with the same speed? See again in this question, speed is constant. Speed is same, right? That's why with the uh, with time, the distance and time here are we can say they would be directly proportional. Yes. Oh, forgot to do homework. See, homework is very important. Yeah. You should do it, Prashant sir. Yes, actually, you should draw the table. All right. So first, we know that it is in direct proportion. A is to B equals to A one is to B one equals to A two is to B two. Right? This is actually what we uh, the this that's how we actually represent it. Now let's make a table. So distance travelled in kilometer and time in minutes. So one twenty kilometers. It is travelling in one hour thirty minutes. What is one hour? That is sixty minutes plus thirty minutes. That's going to be ninety minutes. Yes, yes, Prashansa. Yes, Suhani finds it easy. Great. Now, question is saying that how many kilometers? So let's assume those kilometers to be x. Will it travel in two hours forty-five minutes? One hour means sixty minutes. Two hour means one twenty minutes plus forty-five minutes. It's going to be one sixty-five minutes. Yes. Okay. So we know that when time is increasing, distance over here is also increasing, right? It's a case of direct proportion. Right, because speed is constant, so more the time, uh, more the distance covered in that case. Yes. Okay. So we have one twenty by ninety x by one sixty five ratio is same. So all you have to do is to simple calculate it, right? So x equals to one twenty by ninety into one sixty five. Ma'am, you are the best teacher. Thank you, Aradhya Shukla. So just simplify this four times fifty five. That's going to be what? That's going to be two hundred and twenty kilometers. Please do not forget to write the units. Yes. Yes, Madhul, correct. Two twenty, Pratesh two twenty. Yes, 
ऋतुज इमेजिनेटिव कॉर्नर करेक्ट आदित्य प्रतेश कुलकर्णी रिफ्रेश द स्क्रीन वन ट्री प्लांट यस टू ट्वेंटी किलोमीटर्स गुनगुन टेगो राइट एप्सल्यूटली दिस इज द आंसर Yes. So we all have understood what direct proportion is and how to apply this in the questions, right? We have understood the concept. Yes, I do understand. Yes, Badal. Now let's take a quick look at another thing. So it's a very, it's a very interesting fact, and I think that all of you should be aware of this. Yes. So take a look at this. This is the map of Karnataka, and this is the map of India, right? now the distance how we denote that in a map and how and what is the actual distance so obviously the distance between two places on a map if you see that's going to be directly proportional to the actual distance between the places right let's suppose in karnataka if i'm talking about two places right so there one centimeter denotes 50 km whereas if you talk about the map of india so here one centimeter represents 500 kilometers but we know that this is not the actual distance between the two places this is how we actually represent them on a map right yes factorization yeah okay yeah that's called scaling absolutely right thank you pragati paul underscore 06 all right so we have understood that how we denote the distances on a map that scaling and how actual distance is uh, proportional with it let's take a quick look at this question to understand find the actual distance between bangalore and delhi which is at a distance of 5 cm on the given map indrapal bhalla i like maths great bhavika also wants factorization Gungun Tagore, you're a great teacher because of you. I got full marks in test. Wow, amazing, Gungun. Yes. Tomorrow is our test of this chapter in school, Sneha Deep Course. So you should practice well, and I'm sure that you would do good in your test. All right. Now, all of you, please pay attention to this. Here we are seeing that the distance. on a map it is representing 1 cm is actually representing 500 km now we need to find out the actual distance between bangalore and delhi right so between bangalore and delhi if you think about it 1 cm is 500 km on map right so 5 cm distance so on a we don't know actual distance so let's assume that to be x km right so i can say that 1 cm because they will be in direct proportion 1 cm by 500 km equal to 5 cm by x km So to find this out, x would be equals to five times five hundred by one. So this gets cancelled, right? So we have twenty five hundred kilometers. So the actual distance between Bangalore and Delhi is twenty five hundred kilometers. Yes, everybody is given the right answer. Great. So this was about direct proportion, right? So now we have understood that. Now let's understand inverse proportion. So to understand this in a similar manner like we did for direct proportion, let's go to the construction site. Yes, yes, Bhavishka. Twenty five hundred kilometers, so so easy. Okay, so you have understood direct proportion really well. All right. So after five months of work, the project owner wants the project to be completed in eight months instead of ten months. If you remember, Abhiditya, ma'am, thank you for this session. Thank you, Bajju. Thank you so much. Uh, you can make table if you want. You can do that. That's okay. Ah, uh, one commodity increase and decrease at the same rate, vice versa. Yes, that's what that's what inverse proportion is, right, Vishnu Prasad Sahu? Yes. All right. So after five months of work, see, in the beginning we told that the construction work has to be completed in ten months, right? So after five months, now Rahil wants the construction work to be completed in eight months. Yes. So time has decreased. Now Rahil doesn't know how to deal with this. So let's help him out. Can you answer this question? to complete the project in 8 months he should dash the number of workers whether he should decrease he should increase the number of workers should be same or none what should be the answer in this case yes sneha deep kaur thanks for the session ma'am yes quickly i want your answer shri sat piyush hello ma'am session is so good thank you shri sat increase prishnu prasad sahu gungun yes 
Anil Kumar, I love Baiju's and proud to be a Baijuite. Increase, increase, increase. Everyone is saying increase. Yes, exactly. Since the project, the time has reduced this time, so number of workers needs to be increased. Yes, so it should increase actually. So that's the answer. All right. Now let's get back to the construction site. So deadline has been reduced to three months. So that means the number of workers should be more, right? So he's thinking now that he should have hired more workers from the beginning, right? So in the beginning for completing the entire project in 10 months, 300 workers were hired. Yes. So Rahil is thinking that now the deadline is eight months. How many workers were to be hired from the beginning? Yes. Can we calculate it and help him out? So let's take a look at this. So number of workers needed to complete the project in 10 months. If you see in the beginning, 300 workers were hired, right? If the project were to be completed in one month, so how many workers are needed? 300 times 10 workers, right? That's going to be equals to basically 3000 workers are needed in that case. If it is to be completed in one month. Yes. Now the number of workers need to complete this project in eight months. So how many workers are needed? Simply you would say that ma'am 300 times 10 divided by eight, that's going to be 375. Absolutely. Got the Kumar, right? Yes. Vishnu Prasad Sahu 375. Correct. So this is for when we are completing it in yes, unitary method. Correct Harshit. Right. So what we can see here is that time is decreasing. From 10 months, it has reduced to eight months. So number of workers need to be increased in that case. And this is what we call inverse proportion. So the number of workers and the time taken to complete the task are in inverse proportion if the amount of work units is constant. Yes. So amount of work is not changing. The same construction work they have to do, right? Which they were supposed to complete in 10 months. We are not changing that. So in such cases, with decreasing time, the number of workers have to be increased. Yes. All right, so time and number of workers over here are inversely proportional. That's how we denote inversely proportional. This sign remains same. This will come in the denominator. All right. So here we can say that when the value of one quantity is increasing with respect to decrease in other, right? Or vice versa. This is what we say that the quantities are in inverse proportion. That means the two quantities over here are opposite in nature. So take, take a look at this. Let's suppose we have A and B. These are the two quantities which are in inverse proportion. So I'll say that AB would be equal to C in this case. Yes, that's what I'm showing you. Yes. Snedeep Kaur, ma'am, your teaching is very awesome. Thank you. Express inverse proportions. Yes, Aradhya Shukla. Look at this. So A and B are in inverse proportion. I'll say that AB if AB is equal to C, right? So ratio is going to be same and this proportionality constant is C over here. So that's how we denote them. We represent them. A is inversely proportional to 1 by B. Yes. Confusion. Sometimes I get confused in direct and inverse proportion. Why? You just need to understand this. Understand the concept. Yep. All right. So A is inversely proportional to 1 by B. And directly proportional, we denote this way, is directly proportional to B. That's how we are denoting inversely proportional. Okay. Now let's take a quick look at the general form of inverse proportion. So if A and B are said to be inverse proportion, if A multiplied by B is equals to A1 times P1 is equal to A2 times P2 and so on like this. Yes, logic you need to use. All right. So how do we represent it? A times B equals to A1 times P1 equals to A2 times B2. Right. Understood? Yes. How we are actually denoting it? Uh, Pritesh, ma'am, you make maths easy for us. Thank you. Yes. Any doubts till now? Hmm. Ruthu's imaginative corner. It's not like that. See, read the question carefully. It's not that time is for work and time, so it will always be. It's, it's not like that. Yes. All right. So now let's get back to the construction side and see what Rahil is doing. So as I said, the project has to be completed in eight months of time instead of 10 months. Five months are already uh, uh, five months are already over. So five months have already passed. Now Rahil is thinking that how many more people do I need to hire so that the work get completed in eight months. So for 10 months, 300 workers were hired, right? After five months of work, deadline was reduced to eight months. 
So how many extra workers he needs to hire now? Yes. Can you tell me? Let's help him out. So 300 workers were hired for completing the project in 10 months. After 5 months of work, the deadline is reduced to 8 months. How many more workers need to be hired now? Quickly. Yes, Abhinav Shetty. Uh, Abhiditya, no doubt. Okay, Prashansa, no doubts. Yes. Alright, so here, if you think about it, the project was to be completed in 10 months. 5 months have already passed. So, what is the remaining time period? Remaining time period is actually 5 months. Right? So, number of workers that were hired in the beginning for 10 months, that were 300. So, we have 300 workers. So, the remaining project was to be completed by 300 workers in 5 months. So, let's suppose if they have to complete this work in 1 month. So, that means number of workers should be 300 times 5. That's going to be 1500 workers because you have reduced the time. So, obviously, you would require more workers in that case. Yes? All right. But now, the project has to be completed in 8 months instead of 10 months. 5 months have already passed. So, what are the remaining months? Remaining months are 3. And we just said to complete the project in 1 month, how many workers are needed? 300 times 5. So, to complete the project in 3 months, we will simply do 300 times 5 divided by 3. That means 500. 500 workers are still needed. But already we have 500 workers are needed, but already we have 300 workers. So, simply I will subtract 300 from 500. So, extra workers that we require are 200. Yes. Uh, Amrita Mishra, sorry ma'am, late. I thought class will be at 5 p.m. No, it's okay. So, Amrita, what, whatever you have missed, you can watch the recorded session on YouTube. Yes. Yes, tree plant, correct. Rishab Gupta, you want me to repeat the entire solution? So, I'm repeating the entire solution one more time for the ones you haven't understood this. See, if you think about the case that we considered, the project was to be completed in 10 months. Yes. Yes. And 300 workers were hired at the beginning for that work. So, 5 months were passed. Half of the, almost half of the work was done. So, 10 months was the total span of time. So, after 5 months, 5 months were still left to complete the project. Yes. And 300 workers the Rahil had. So, if the workers were to complete the entire project in one month, so how many workers can would be able to do that? Obviously, 300 workers cannot do this work. Yes, because time has reduced. So, number of workers in that case should be 300 times 5. Yes. Sneedeep Kaur, I am repeating once more. Pratesh, I hope everyone has understood till here. Quickly give me thumbs up and smileys in the comments section. Then I will move to the next slide. If you have understood till here. Yes. Rishabh, I have repeated one more time for the ones you haven't understood. Yes, I am waiting. 200. Okay. Yes, Pritesh is giving me lots of thumbs up. Aditi, yes, ma'am, clear. Sujit, Abhiditya. Yes, Harshit, Free Plan, Prashansa. Cool. So, till now, we just discussed for one month, if project has to be completed in one month, so we require 300 times 5 workers. Now, the deadline has been changed. The deadline has been changed to 8 months instead of, instead of 10 months. Five, five months have already passed. How many months are remaining now? Three months. So, if we have to complete the project in one month, we require 300 times five workers, 1500 workers. If we were to complete this project in three months, we will simply divide this 300 times five with three, unitary method. So, that means we require 500 workers for this project. But already we have 300 workers, right? So, how many more workers, how many extra workers need to be hired? That is 200. Madhul Kumar, full clear. Snehdeep Kaur understood. Tree plant, loads of thumbs up. Kalpesh Kumar, Nigam Kishan Narayan, smileys, thumbs up. You can see. Understood, yes. So everyone has understood this question. This was a little trickier, yeah. But an interesting one. Mali Lukesh, yes. Doubt clear, Sneha. Snehdeep Kaur, sorry. All right. Now let's get back to the construction side and now what we can see 8 months have passed and the construction is completely done. The project is now complete and Rahil is so happy and relieved and so this is what uh, this is was about inverse proportion right. So we have understood what direct proportion is what inverse proportion is. 
Gungun Tagore, you make all doubt clear. Thank you, Gungun. Yes, crystal clear. Great, great. Now let's take a quick look at the what uh, what we have studied till now. So let's summarize this. So in direct proportion, what we learnt is how we represent this. We represent the quantities like a. We represent the quantities like a is directly proportional to b. Right, this is the proportionality sign. So a by b because the ratio is same is equals to a1 by b2 equals to a2 by b2. So if one quantity is increasing, other one will also increase. If one quantity is decreasing, other one will also decrease. Right. Similarly, in case of inverse proportion, we learned that if we have two quantities like a is inversely proportional to b, that's how we represent this. So a times b is equals to a1 times b1. So if one quantity is increasing, another one would decrease, and vice versa. So this was about direct and inverse proportion. Right. Well, this was the last session for um, grade eight math, and I'm sure that all of you have your exams coming up. Yes, right. When do you have your exams, by the way? Questions? Which questions? Yes, Anil Kumar understood. Yes, Pratesh, crystal clear. Great. Paijus have great animations with great teachers. Thank you. Yes, last of Feb. Okay. Our other factorization chapter. Exams are going on. Rishabh, fourth March. Gungun Kumari, eleventh March. Yes. Amaze Queen, seventeenth. Fourteenth February. Okay. For some of you, exams are going on. For some of you, exams are really close. Yes, but I'm sure that all of you are done with the entire syllabus. Yeah. So whatever chapters are coming, even if you have missed any of the sessions, you can watch the recorded session on the YouTube. Right. Yes, third March. Yeah, last week of Feb. All right. So practice well. Whatever you have in the NCERT, just practice all the questions, including the examples. This is this is the suggestion that I would give you. Practice all the examples, all the questions from NCERT, and once you are done with that, you can try out a few questions from any of the other reference books just for practice. Because see, maths you will only get better when you practice a lot. Yes. All right. Now I know that some of uh, grade eight uh, exams are going to start, and for grade ninth also, the exams are really close. Now let me give you a glimpse for grade ninth sessions. So now we are going to do the final revision. So most important questions for exams would be would be covered in these sessions. So on February fourteenth, we have a session on physics. February sixteen, you have a chemistry session. February eighteenth, biology session, and February twenty first and twenty three, you have a math session with me. Yes, NCERT exemplar. Yes, you can do that. Definitely, you should do it. See, these books are good for practice. Surface areas and volumes. We have already done Snehdeep Kaur, and we divided that uh, session, uh, that chapter, in two sessions. You can watch the recorded uh, sessions on YouTube. Yes, for grade eight, this was the last math session. All right. So this was this is the new series for grade nine for their final revision before the exams. So please, all of you, please like, share, and subscribe so that you get notifications about the upcoming sessions and all the very, very best for exams. I'm sure that you would do really well. So I'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you.